Thank you and welcome back to the second half of the program, the conversation on TV360 coming to you right here from Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, Peter, our next um, discussion here this day is the issue of um, election petition outcomes. We have seen that uh, in the 2023 general election, we have seen litigations in, you know, at various levels. At the federal level, we have seen the presidential election petition tribunal give its judgment. Yeah, we have also, in uh, September uh, 6th, if I'm correct, we have yeah. also seen the uh, election petition tribunals in uh, some states affirming the victory of the validly declared winner as announced by ENEC. Mm -hmm. And we have also seen the one case of a state that is in Kano State yeah. where the tribunal obtained the declaration from ENEC. Uh, so, and just today in Lagos here, the petition against the declaration of Governor Babaji Desonwolu as the validly elected governor of Lagos State yeah. was upheld and the uh, petition dismissed. Yeah. So looking at these petitions, you know, some persons have come out to see uh, the, 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 the number of petitions against election outcome in Nigeria uh, is becoming worrisome. I've even had uh, at, a, at the swearing of new judges of the Court of Appeal, where yeah. the Chief Justice of, the, of, the, of Nigeria said Nigeria is the most litigationist uh, uh, country in the world because they have a lot of uh, cases coming to court. So looking at these elections uh, petitions, you know, one has also been, uh, one has also had people say, oh, uh, we don't have faith in the judiciary. You know, people trying to uh, lambast the judiciary just for the crime of doing their job. Uh, you talk about the presidential election petition tribunal, for example. You recollect that, you know, when that judgment uh, was delivered. It was, you know, it was a very sound, logical, and uh, on point of law judgment. But some persons, even uh, one was shocked that uh, a, an acclaimed international uh, writer, uh, Chimamanda, went as far as uh, lampooning the judges for that judgment. So for, for me, it's, it's something that we need to place the issues in proper perspective that come. When, when election is conducted and the petitioner is challenging the outcome of the election, you don't expect that you just go to court and you know, try to whip up emotions and sentiments using you know, the social media. Election petitions, just like any case that goes to court, is serious business. Your petition must be, based, must be supported with fact. Look at the case of Kano, for example. The APC candidate who challenged the return of the MP, NNPP candidate, the candidate as the governor-elect went to court and was able to prove that 160, I think 165,000 or 163,000 of the ballot papers were not stamped and signed. That was a, and when the court looked at the difference between the winner and the runner-up, and the court realized that that figure could make a difference, that was why the court gave the judgment. If the difference between the winner and the runner-up was such that the, even if they take away that 165,000, uh, mm -hmm. that it will still not have any effect on the, on the outcome, the court would have declared the the winner as the duly elected. Because one, uh, one fact we can, we must also educate our people about is that under the law, there are provisions that have to be fulfilled before a, a candidate in an election is declared as the winner. And the provisions are one, he or she must have scored the highest number of lawful votes. Number two is that he or she must have scored, you know, two, it must have scored over 25% in two-thirds of the states of the federation in, in, in the case of the presidential election, while in the state it must be two-thirds of the local governments in the state. But we have seen this election petition uh, tribunals giving our judgment on the point of, in fact, there was the case of um, 
a senatorial candidate whose uh, election was nullified, I think, in, in Plateau State. And I watched the, uh, the outcome of the election. I saw how people went on protests. I, I, I'm like, election petition is not determined by the number of protests you can hold. It's determined by the facts you present in court. Vita, what's your take on this? Actually, um, there is nothing strange about the many petitions, you see. I think it's a follow-up from the kind of desperation people approach politics in this country. Mm -hmm. People just want to hear one uh, language win. They don't fathom that they can lose. And when they lose now, they now run to the courts. And like we saw in, the la in this dispensation, you bombard the courts with all sorts of blackmail. You bombard the courts with all sorts of threat. You bombard the courts with all sorts of you know, foul behaviors, thinking that they would, out of fear, out of blackmail, accede to you and possibly patronize you in their judgment. Mm. But if you see what happened at the presidential election, I think possibly the tribunal went to the extra length it went in terms of open broadcast of the judgment and then the meticulous and you know uh, detailed. The detailed manner they delivered their judgment. I think it will take a person with a high level of uh, selfishness to now lampoon the judge. You can't lampoon the judges based on that. You take your evidences. Now good enough, the people that lost have gone to the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court yeah. We are waiting them now to prove that the judges miscarried justice in that over 800 pages judgment that took over 14 hours to deliver on national television. For we now to know, yes, the judges perverted. You just, Talk is, talk is cheap. You can just use any word. You say international right. I don't know what that word means and all those kind of things. You can just use any word to, to express your selfish interest because it's about the expression of selfish interest. We are, how you look at ju a judgment now depends on how it favors, it favors you. you yes. If it doesn't yes. favor you, it's rubbish. It's rubbish. If yes. it favors you. It's that good. reminds me of a vice presidential candidate who went on national television. He was you know, being interviewed about the outcome of the last election. He was asked, uh, um, now, what, what can you say about the 2023 general election? He said, it was rigged. Yeah, and they now asked him, including the 6 million votes you got, yeah, he said, hey, that one was not rigged. <laughs> Imagine that kind of frivolity, you know. So, it is natural. That is double speak. It is natural. And as you say, there is so much selfie, there are so much ulterior interest now built into elections. Everybody sees the election as a do or, or die, die affair. Yes. And in that, the judiciary will easily fall casualty. Uh, yes. And you now see protests, like you say, you now organize protests. See that, that when they now see that people are protesting, they will rule for us. Yes. And this and that. Those, are, those things does not hold yeah. water. Yeah. And yeah. it will not hold water. Yes. So it's natural. Let it continue. Let the cause of justice, as they say, continue. Yes. And let lawyers eat, because most lawyers know the defective nature of the petitions they bring before the tribunal. And at the end of the day, they will make their money. That in, is just in, it. in fact, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that you know bother me is when people come up and say, "Oh, if you go to the petition, if you go to the tribunals, you know, it's like it's a fait accompli that nothing will come out of." So it. why do they go? Uh, that is the question. Why do they go? Uh, and again, we we also need to we also need to educate them. You see that this is a country in which. Local government chairmanship election outcome has been upturned. St uh, State House of Assembly election has been upturned by the courts. Um, House of Representatives, senatorial elections, governorship election outcome have all been upturned. What the courts deal with are facts and evidence. You don't need to say that. Like you said, uh, one of the presidential candidates whose supporters are in the forefront of making all these outlandish and special allegations against the judiciary, was a beneficiary of the same judiciary up to the Supreme Court. You know, he was, so to say, rigged out. And at the end of the day, he walked his way through the Supreme Court and he was affirmed. Again, he was removed by a House of Assembly of the state. And then the Supreme Court still restored him. It's a matter of when it favors you. And now, let us even not look at it, because you mentioned the case of um, Kano State. We are the petitioner presented 
can say incontrovertible evidences that see the, these uh, ballot uh, papers, ballot uh, papers used in so and so number of uh, centers, we are not stamped, and that invalidated them. And it was very, very clear enough. It is quite different from saying, ah, we won. We lost the distance. And without presenting even one copy of the result of how you won from one of the 177,000 polling units in this country, you just make the claim, ah, we won. And because our judges have this and that. You know, those things are not. When that election, when that uh, tribunal judgment was given on September 6th, I can tell you most solemnly, that most Nigerians, even those that we are supporting, we are so bad by that mm. because of the meticulousness of that judgment. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Well, thank you very much for coming onto the program today. You are welcome. Uh, I hope you oblige us your presence when next we call. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Well, that is the that is the proceedings for today. The uh, the program today. Until we come again next time, please continue to watch the conversation on TV three hundred and sixty from in Nigeria. Thank you very much.